today on Karamo. There's never a day so I don't have shocks. Boom. Get wet. Ah! A mystery illness is ruining his life. Do you believe your husband is having these shots? It's a struggle. I do have doubts, yes. But no one believes him. You got a twin brother, and how's your relationship with your twin brother? I don't believe it. You don't believe I don't. it? Do you think I need attention or something? Quit playing, man, come on. Oh, wow. What will the lie detector test reveal? The truth is... Plus... She says, go check the back seat, where it looks like two people had been laying there. Did he cheat on her in their brand new car? There was no stain in my car. How do you explain that? Shut up because I'm tired of you. Will this eight year relationship come to an end? My unlock the phone investigator searched his GPS and. Yeah, have fun, I'm done. Roxy promised her husband she would stand by his side in sickness and in health. Then her husband, Quan, fell ill to a mystery illness that shocks his entire body. Roxy has tried her best to be supportive, but is struggling. His twin brother doesn't believe the shocks are real. And we are here to unlock the shocking truth. Let's first meet Roxy. Please welcome Roxy to the show. Hey, Roxy, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. Thank you for being here. So your husband is experiencing shocks. Please explain. Absolutely. Um, he describes this as electrical shocks that go throughout his body and cause him pain. Um, sometimes he states the pain is tolerable. Um, other times he claims that the pain is so bad that it just it catches him off guard and uh -huh. he has these outbursts. Um, he's fallen because he says his legs get weak and give out. His arms have locked up on him. And how did this um, all start? This all started happening, all these symptoms started developing shortly after he had COVID. Mm, okay. Did you see a doctor? Uh, we did as things started, started coming on. We started with his primary care physician, and then we have since seen three neurologists and a specialist. Mm, okay. And what's triggering these shocks that he's having? We don't know. Got it. So we actually have some video of the shocks that you're talking about. Can I see the video? What? God. Get it again. Get. It's interesting because you, it looks comical, like you want to laugh, but then you also want to be empathetic and think like, maybe there could be something going on, right? Like, cause you get a sense like, is that acting? But then you're like, well, maybe not. So y'all paying some real money to, to see what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, why did you take that deep breath and was like, hmm. It's hard, it's really tough. Um, you know, he's, he's not working, everything falls on me. And it's it's a struggle. Yeah. You feel overwhelmed right now? I do. Yeah, okay. How do the shocks affect life at home for him? Well, um, you know, I have to do a lot. I work a career and then I come home and I'm basically, you know, running the household. We have two children at home as well too. So, you know, they try to help out as they can, but it's, it's difficult. Um, you know, I, I don't have the same comical, upbeat, energetic husband that I married. Um, it's its not the person that, that I've known for the past 18 years. Mm, mm. What was it like before? Constantly going out, doing things. Like, we don't really go anywhere. We're homebodies now. How have your feelings toward the shock change? Sure. So, you know, I'm in a, I'm in a position of just uncertainty. Like, first and foremost, I just want to say, like, I've been incredibly supportive to my husband. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that, that's clear that you're supported. You're clear. But do you believe your husband is having these shocks? You know, I've been back and forth in my mind. I think a lot of it has to do, you know, his family doesn't believe him. And you have all these people around you who say, oh, this isn't true, what he's doing. He's making it up. And then, you know, I start going into that spiral in my mind. Like, is he? Is there something? Like, is he manifesting this pain? So as of right now, you don't believe him. You're in doubt. I do have doubts, yes. Mm. How has your relationship with Laz, um, your husband's twin brother, changed over time? 
it has changed dramatically. They, they used to be very close. Um, we were all really close, used to, you know, hang out together all the time and things have just really taken a turn for the worst. There's no communication, no support, none of that. From Got it. So the twin brother is like, I'm not dealing with this either. Right. Mm, got it. So I just want to be clear with you. He has not been diagnosed with anything, correct? Correct. You wanted him to take a lie detector test to prove that the shocks are real. Yes. Mm, okay, then. Well, listen, everyone, I think I'm ready to meet your husband, Quan. Everybody, please welcome Quan to the show. <laughs> Quan, how you doing, man? All right, how's it going? Good, good. Can I give you a hug? Oh, yeah. Good to meet you. All right. So, what, how do you feel about what you just heard from your wife? <sighs> Whew. Huh. Got me teary at it. Yeah. Um, she, I, I, I believe this is something new to her as well as me. She doesn't know how to take it, don't know what to believe. Me having these shocks is just random. Yeah. So it's not like me, I'm making this up. There's never a day so I don't have shocks. Boom. A mystery illness is ruining his life. Get what? Ah! But no one believes him. You got a twin brother, and how's your relationship with your twin brother? You think I need attention or something? Quit playing, man, come on. Oh, wow. What will the lie detector test reveal? The truth is... So your husband is experiencing shocks. Please explain. He describes this as electrical shocks that go throughout his body and cause him pain. I'm in a position of just uncertainty. Me having these shocks is just random. Yeah. So it's not like me, I'm making this up. And just so that everyone know, the reason that your wife is not here is because she's at home with the kids. Yes. So she couldn't make it here today, otherwise she was gonna be here. They're not having some marital issues right now, it's just <laughs> she's at home with the kids. <laughs> right. um, but you, you've been trying to get answers for a while. Yes, for over, almost three years. Yeah. Uh, two uh, neurologists and one specialist. Got it. Actually, and, recently. And hearing your wife say that she has doubts that she doesn't believe anymore, does that hurt? Because I know you said you get getting Of course that out. hurts. Like, I mean, she's the only one that's basically taking me to the doctor's appointments to, to see what medications I need. She actually makes up all my medications for me. So, mm -hmm. so all I, I don't even know what I'm supposed to take or what I'm not supposed to take. Mm -hmm. But, so She's been doing everything. She for does you. it all. How often did you experience these shocks? Every day, every morning, from the time I wake up till nighttime. It, it may give me two to three hours a day. It may hit me four to five hours a day. But it's there's okay. never a day so I don't have shocks. And what changed since you started getting the shocks? Uh, right after I had COVID, that's when it, it started off really gradual and t like a tingle. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, boom. Mm. So why was this lie detector test important to you? Huh. So I can prove yeah. that I'm, I need this for disability. I can't work like this. I can't work with shocks. I can't, can't do anything. Yeah. I can't even drive. Yeah. If I drive, uh. Because this changed your whole quality of life. Yeah, it does. And so I asked you, your wife about that question about, like, what were you like before? She said that you were driving, y'all were going on dates, y'all were active. Yeah, we were leaving for the weekend. Yeah. Do you miss that life? Yeah, I do. Do you ever feel like maybe you'll never get that life back? Yep, that's exactly what, what it feels like. Have the shocks gotten worse or changed since they started? Oh, it's definitely got worse. And there was an incident at work while you were having one of these shocks? Yeah. What happened? I was on uh, a forklift. And the forklift, uh, my, actually my right leg pushed on the, the pedal. Because of the shock. Exactly. The shock hit like boom. And then when I did that, the, the load tipped it over like that. Now, if there was some person standing on the other side, they would have got all those boxes. Mm, got it. And how does your family feel about your mystery illness? <sighs> they don't believe it. Just, I'm just going to leave it like that. They don't believe it. They don't I mean, because you got all. a twin brother. And how's your relationship with your twin brother? I haven't talked to him in about six months. Wow. wow. Why did you distance yourself? Because it's like, it's kind of like me telling everybody that I do have an illness and nobody's listening to what I'm saying. Nobody's believing it. And then including my own twin brother, he's like, yeah, right, nah, come on. And I'm like, 
dude, I'm being very sincere to you. Like, out of all of our years living together as twins, I've never lied to you. You wow. can't make this up. Mm. Okay. Well, we don't know. That's why you're here for that lie detector test. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, listen, I'm ready to meet your twin brother, Laz, because your twin brother, Laz, doesn't agree that you actually have any. So, everyone, welcome to the show, Laz. <laughs> Welcome to the show, man. How you doing? Thank you. So, how do you feel about this? I don't believe it. You don't believe it? I don't. It? I don't. We twin brothers, man. I haven't even, I haven't talked to you since like six months ago, right? Yeah. And the last time I even physically seen you was in 2021. Right. That's a huge gap, man. Yeah, that's a huge gap. I know it. Quit playing, man. Come on. You say alleged illness. Explain. Because... When we were kids, we had heart murmurs. Mm -hmm. And you know that. We would go to try to go to football practice, and we couldn't play football because it hindered us. So now, as right now, he's saying he has this rare condition. I think it's just a rare case of lies. You, 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 think, I, you think I need attention or something? You think I need attention? I need, I need attention, so I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to make this a disease or illness. Hey, oh. this, is, this is my real life. I'm, saying, I'm, I'm actually getting shocks. No matter what anybody else say or think, I'm getting shocks. I and I don't want the whole I focus to just be all, all on me that, like that, man. Why don't you believe Kwan? Because it's, it's inconsistent to me. Like, to you? Yes. What's inconsistent? Um, I, I remember with the time that I called him because of his uh, oldest son, uh, called me to, um, to check on him to see how he's doing. So, so, why, so why, then, why does it take somebody to call? So then there, so when I, huh? Why, where, where were you? Like, why, what, why did his son have When I reach to out to you and call you and send you messages, and all you can tell me is, he good. Oh, a couple times. Come so on. A, a handful of times you've reached out. But here's the thing. You have no empathy. You have no compassion. You know, I, I understand that I also have this, these disbeliefs going through my I've mind. I've known you but before. Like, you just, I've you known just you before. Y'all started dating. I've known you before know. that, right? So you know how close we are. Close, but... No, no. Okay, so if somebody doesn't answer your call, this is your twin brother. Why yes. Didn't you pop up at, why didn't you pop up at the house? Not what? Time, not why, why didn't I pop up at the house? Oh, you don't remember me coming to the house? Because nobody answered the door. Is that true? He came to the house and y'all didn't answer the door? Um, I say a couple times. So but nobody has still tried. answers, nobody answers the door. So he has tried to come through and, and you, you said no. I don't feel like no one's understanding me. In his mind, he's looking for his twin just to say, I hear you and I'm empathetic to what you're going through. Why do you feel like you can't do that? I can, but I just, it's hard for me to, to take that in because, like I said, whenever I have had a health condition, he will have the same. Got it. Quan, your daughter has a message that she shared with me as well. We feel our dad is using this disease as an excuse to justify being absent in our lives. When it's not discussed, it seems he forgets to have symptoms. <laughs> oh, wow. Bingo. Usually on this show, I unlock phones. And so I wanted to see medical bills, because I want to see how much money you really spending on finding treatments. Can you show me the medical bills? These are fake too, right? I printed these up. Yes, yes. So, these are, you've been to um, a neuropsychologist and you spent, it's the, you got billed $2,870. You got, you went to another neuropsychologist. Um, it was $695. You went to, I mean, it's just bills upon bills of you going out. Yes, you have a copay that makes it cheaper, but have you seen this? No. He's going? To, but I'm going to fake that, to, though. To tell you yeah. it's unknown. But, yeah, exactly, exactly. To tell but me I'm just something saying, that's unknown. The only reason for me is I'm like, why would somebody spend this much money? You want to see this? To spend this much money to, to do what? Well, listen, I actually invited one of my friends here. His name is Dr. Ian Smith, um, because I needed somebody who's a medical doctor to be here to talk to us. Dr. Ian, how you doing, man? Yeah, I'm good to see you, man. Dr. Ian, you've been listening in, and I need you to help shed some light on this mystery. Um, so, Dr. Ian, what are your thoughts on Quan's mystery shocks? But it seems to me there's more going on than maybe this being the effect of COVID. 
What will the lie detector test reveal? So I think it's time to finally unlock the truth behind this medical mystery. I was waiting for this moment. Let's go. All right. The incredible answer is about to be unlocked. The truth is... How often did you experience these shocks? This every day. So why was this lie detector test important to you? So I can prove. Does this change your whole quality of life? Yeah, it does. Do you miss that life? Yeah, I do. Do you ever feel like maybe you'll never get that life back? Yep, that's exactly what, what it feels like. And how does your family feel about your mystery illness? <sighs> they don't believe it. Dr. Ian, you've been listening in, and I need to help shed some light on this mystery. Um, so, Dr. Ian, what are your thoughts on Quan's mystery shocks? Well, first of all, this is very difficult to watch. I'm a twin myself. I have a twin brother. So this is difficult on many levels, actually. Um, but what I find interesting is that what people have to understand, and, and I'm not, by the way, saying that this for sure is related to COVID. Mm -hmm. So I will say that these are very interesting and very unique symptoms. He's mentioning paresthesias, which is the tingling and the prickling uh, of his nerves. He's also talking about mus musculoskeletal issues. So it is possible that you know, it could be sequelae from COVID. No one can say for sure. You can't prove it or disprove it. But I will say this. He's been on for the last maybe 10 minutes or so. He's not had any symptoms whatsoever or any close to symptoms. So it makes me wonder if these symptoms are real. I'm not saying they're not. But if the symptoms are real, what really brings on, what triggers these symptoms, mm. number one? Mm -hmm. Number two, I would say that he's been to neuropsychologists. He's been to a neurologist. He has no diagnosis. This is obviously something that's neurological and musculoskeletal and, you know, maybe like a tick, a nervous tick, we call it. And so it's hard to say. All, all you can really do, Karamo, which is what you're about to do, is see whether or not he's lying about it and, you know, that he's really experiencing these. But that doesn't prove or disprove whether or not it's connected to COVID. Got it. Okay. Um, Dr. Ian, I got to ask you this real quick. How, how many times have you seen people say, in your career say, like, they feel something and yet it's unexplained? Is that something that happens well, often? It happens more often than we would like and more often than patients would like. And you do the best you can with a battery of tests to try to find a diagnosis. But I think there's more afoot here. I think there's more going on here. It seems to be a very complicated family dynamic. The twin situation is troubling to me. There's a history here that we obviously have not gotten into. You write about that, Dr. Ian. That's why, that's where I step in. That's my, that's, that's my expertise, where we start getting the emotional and mental health. But I appreciate you being here, Dr. Ian. Thank you for shedding some light on that. Thank you so much. I gotta tell y'all this. Um, I, well, I gotta tell y'all one of the things, like I respect Dr. Ian's opinion and his so much because he's such a smart man and he deals with so many people who have these conditions. And I gotta tell y'all something else. The fact that you haven't had a shock, of course, everybody's like, well, look, he had no shock. You know what I mean? Right. But we shouldn't impl put our own implications onto you. We shouldn't put our own biases onto you just because we assume you should be in pain 24-7. Exactly. Yep. Because your relationships are being affected at the end of the day. And when relationships are being affected, it starts to hurt everybody. And that's what's happening here. We're having a breakdown of two brothers mm -hmm. who loved each other who have to be more empathetic for each other. I understand that you have your disbelief. I understand that you're worried about him, but there has to be more communication. Otherwise, this will start to ricochet and you'll end up spending 20, 30 years not together because you just couldn't be more empathetic to what he's going through. You can't shut him out. Because the thing is, is that even as we just saw from your daughter, for her to say that she felt shut out, that's a problem. So people have to know, because she feels like you're making an excuse to not be in her life, and she's starting to internalize that, and you need to say, no, 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 no. Let me let you in. Let me bring you in more. Yes, daddy's feeling this way, sure. but I'm still going to be sitting here. Yes, you're feeling this way, but I'm still going to come and be when I can. Communicate more. Don't shut him out. Like you said, he, he comes to the door, you, you keep it locked, mm -hmm. unlock it. All right? Can you do that? Yep. Okay. All right, well, that's the advice that I got. Um, so I think it's time to finally unlock the truth behind this medical mystery. All right, in this, in this envelope, we have unlocked the truth of if you are experiencing this medical condition. The truth is, Quan, is he lying about his health? The incredible answer is about to be unlocked. You are the power. You're up on stage.
He's been on for the last maybe 10 minutes or so. He's not had any symptoms whatsoever. So it makes me wonder if the symptoms are real, what really brings on, what triggers these symptoms? We have unlocked the truth of if you are experiencing this medical condition. The truth is, Quan is not lying about the symptoms and severity of them. What'd you say? What'd you say? What'd you say? What'd you say? What's that? What's that? Hey, 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 don't have to lie. Ah, man, yo. I don't have to lie, man. I'm, I'm in pain every day, man. Do you think I'm joking? Come on, man. We ain't never did this. Never. Okay. Damn. All right, man. All right, I okay. apologize, brother. I'll take your apology, brother. Right. I'll take your apology, brother. I accept it, brother. Ah. What's going through your head right now? Oh, man, a lot of things, and I, I don't even know what to say right now. Because it's real. It's yeah. rotten, man. Yeah. The truth is, is that for him, everything he's experiencing is real. Real, hey, though. It's real, dude. I'm like, and I don't even know how I'm going to do it some, some days, dude. Like, to have this, I don't know, man. Yeah. Oh, man. Sorry, like Dr. Man. Ian said, which was such important, there's many symptoms and things that happen after like epidemics like COVID or other things that we don't really know how, how symptoms pop up until later on. And I'm no medical doctor, so I can't say anything. But what I do know is that you are experiencing something that is, is, is debilitating to you. Morning and night. Laz, I know that you want Quan to meet your daughter who is not born yet. She's doing 2024. Yes, in January 14th. Her work. Yeah. Did you know that? I gotta sing. No, you I didn't know. know. <laughs> I, I gotta sing your invite too, man. You too, baby. Right, well. I, gotta, I gotta sing your invite. It's next month, a baby shower. Okay. So it'll be good. Let me tell you something. I think this is the perfect time for y'all have gotten the truth, because what it does is it allows the reconnection. Look at that smile. Did y'all just see that with these two yeah. brothers right there? Y'all crying too, cause that had me crying. <laughs> you got everybody in here crying. Ooh. Roxy, how do you feel? I don't know. I don't want to say like a terrible wife. I've been supportive, but like, it doesn't feel good that I had any doubts in my mind. Like, that's my husband. We've been together for 18 years. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I love seeing these two hug each other and having that connection. Like, that's, family means so much to me. Yeah. Yeah. Don't have any guilt. I mean, at the end of the day, no one has the answers to this and everyone's trying to respond again like they think they're doing best. Um, we only go with what the facts that we have, but in this moment right here, everyone's finally heard you. We hear you, your family hears you, but you gotta just keep letting them in. Everyone oh, well. hears you, we hear you. Let them in though, let them in, okay? You got it? I wish you the best of luck. Thank I you. wish you the best of luck, and I wish you the best of luck. Congrats on your child, all right? All right, stay with us, friends. We'll be right back with more. a whole week yet. Did he cheat on her in their brand new car? She says, go check the back seat, where it looks like two people had been laying there. Will this eight year relationship come to an end? There was no staying in my car. How do you explain Shut up because I'm tired of you. All right, so Alicia said she got a call from a woman who told her that she just had sex with her boyfriend in his car and left behind evidence to prove it. Alicia then downloaded an app that she claims proves her boyfriend, Alan, is cheating. Alan says Alicia is actually the one who needs to be tracked. So today, we're unlocking both of their phones. Everyone, please welcome Alicia to the show. Hi, Alicia. Hi. How are you doing? Can I have a hug? Yeah, of course. You look very pretty. Thank you. Yeah. 
You look handsome. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, so I, I, I got to start off with this. You got to tell me more about this woman who had the audacity, the audacity <laughs> to call you and tell you that she slept with your man in his car and then left you a gift. Well, let me just tell you, this man was in the back bedroom, knocked out, mm -hmm. and his phone was going off. So I pick it up, and it's a bitch on the phone saying, I just a man in the back of the Impala. We didn't even have it a whole week yet. It's a brand new car. Brand new Impala. She says, bitch, go check the back seat. I'm like. So she's calling you out of your name? Yeah. The audacity. OK. Yes. And so I go out there. There is a stain on the back seat where it looks like two people had been laying there. You know, a stain. Come on. And I'm like, oh, hell no. So I go back inside. I wake this man up. And I'm like, who in the hell did you have in the backseat of our Impala that we just got, barely had it a week? Yeah. And he was like, nobody, nobody. What are you talking about? Well, I mean, clearly, she, I mean, for someone to say, go check for the stain that I left behind, right. they're telling you details. There's not, there's not a question here now of like, whatever. So why didn't you walk out the door right then and there? Because I don't care if you sleep, I don't care. Once I got this information, it'd have been like, deuces, I'm done. Maybe if it was still the beginning of the relationship, I could understand that. But Alan and I have been together for like eight years. Mm -hmm. And at this point, how long were you together when he did this? It's been like three or four years. Three or four years. I Here put in go. a lot of work in this relationship. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just going to throw it away. Has he cheated on you in the past? Yeah. How many times? From what I know. I want to say twice. Twice. From what you know. Yeah. But that means that do you believe that there could be more? Yeah. OK. So why unlock his phone since you know he's cheating? Because I need to know. I need to know what is going on in the relationship. Like, if he's still But you know what's going on. He's cheated. If he's still cheating, like, if I, OK, we haven't had our phone not five months yet, OK? and. We told each other that we were going to commit to this relationship. If I can see that he's being faithful, mm -hmm. I want to continue to try and make it work. Got it. Alicia has laid out why she wants Alan's phone unlocked, so it's time to hear what Alan has to say. So come on out, Alan, so we can hear your side of it. <laughs> Alan, I want to know from you. So you're saying that you're saying that. You did not cheat and that there was no stain? No, I did not cheat. There was no stain in my car. Mm. Alan, what do you have to say about what Alicia was saying about you before you came out? How do you explain the- Shut up because I'm tired of hearing you. Will this eight year relationship come to an end? So let's get down to it and start unlocking these phones. You won't believe what happens after both of their phones are unlocked. Yeah, phone, I'm done. His phone was going off, so I pick it up, and it's a on the phone saying, I just your man in the back seat. How long were you together when he did this? Three or four years. Three or four years. I put in a lot of work in this relationship. So why unlock his phone since you know he's cheating? We were going to commit to this relationship. If I can see that he's being faithful, I want to continue to try and make it work. Alan, what do you have to say about what Alicia was saying about you before you came out? Because she said you've been cheating. She says she knows I haven't that. Been cheating. I haven't cheated not one time on her since we've been together. So why do you believe that Alicia is cheating? Every day I come home from work, I got clothes missing, moved, uh, Axe body wash has been used. So you think she's had men in the house because you think these men are taking your clothes and then also using your, your hygiene product? Yes. <laughs> See, are you serious? You're like, secretism with your phone. You're always talking on it. But behind my back, you go out the room. You, you text I'm busy spying come in, on you. You text messages and come in. She'll ask me, or I'll ask her who, who it was, and she, nobody. 
Oh, got it. I told you, look at my phone anytime you want. So, Alicia, because I heard you just say, I'm too busy, when he says you walk out the room, that you said you're too busy um, recording him. Tell me mm -hmm. about this app that you use. I, I just had a feeling in my stomach that something was not right. So, I got onto his phone, and I downloaded a, a spy app onto his phone. Did you know that she had downloaded this spy app on your phone? No. How I did it make you feel knowing now that she has been downloading a spy app on your phone? That's... Like I, like I said, I ain't got nothing to hide, so it, it kind of hurts because her, for her to have to do that, that's 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 bogus. If you wouldn't have trust. cheated on me to begin with, you know, that's just it's bogus. My on her half, for her to have to, you know, be dirty like that and download something on the phone dirty. just to, I to live listen my in on my conversations you, and everything. And you treat me like crap. In the eight years that y'all been together, and I, this is the honest question: Has there ever been substance abuse issues? No, there hasn't. Has there ever been any substance no. abuse issue? Alcohol, okay. but that's it. Okay, that's the substance. So th you all, you all had an issue with alcohol at some point. Alan used to drink. When we first got together, I used to drink heavily. Okay, then got it, got it. And now you're sober, or you yeah. just you tailed it back? He, okay. Yeah, he doesn't drink anymore. Okay, great. Okay. Well, listen, let's get down to it and start unlocking these phones. <laughs> Alan, we're gonna go start with. We're gonna start with your phone. All right, so you want to know if he was communicating with Dina. He said he is not. My Unlock the Phone investigator searched his phone and he is telling the truth. There was no one in the phone named Dina and we could not find any record of anybody in any messages or anything at all. Alicia wanted to know if Alan was on any dating apps. He said he is not. My Unlock the Phone investigator searched his apps and he is telling the truth. Told you. Alicia wanted to know if Alan was really going to work. He said he is. My Unlock the Phone investigator searched his GPS and he is located oh! 146 times in the last five months at the <laughs> Avenue. So he is going to work. Woman, I'm sorry. I'm glad that you're telling the truth, but I feel like you're still lying about certain things. No. We got y'all there. That was me. I did it for dramatic effect. <laughs> that was me. I was being messy a little bit. <laughs> he's been pinged at work. We corresponded with the schedule, and he's always at work. I told you. Yeah. None to hide. We just unlocked Alan's phone, and now we're about to unlock Alicia's phone. Alicia, are you ready for this? Don't go away, because one more phone will be unlocked. My Unlock the Phone investigator searched her apps and found... Yeah, have fun. I'm done. Can this relationship be saved? If he could just be my partner? Or should they end it right here and now? Alicia wanted to know if Alan was really going to work. He said he is. My Unlock the Phone investigator searched his GPS and he is located 146 times. And so work. he is going to work. We just unlocked Alan's phone and now we're about to unlock Alicia's phone. Alicia, are you ready for this? Yeah. All right, we've unlocked your phone. Alan, you want to know if she was on any dating apps? She says she is not. My Unlock the Phone investigator search her phone, and Alicia is telling the truth. There are no dating apps found on her phone. Alan, you want to know where she was going and where she was hanging out. My Unlock the Phone investigator searched her apps and found two GPS tracking apps that were both connected to your phone. <laughs> One is Life360. But when you turn that off, she has IZKID, which is also attached to your phone. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? No. So she's spending her time tracking your phone and putting apps he on it. He knows about 360. He's got it on my phone as well. Yeah, but you turn it off and then you download it, IZKID. Yeah. All right, so next. Alan wants to know if she was communicating with any other men. She said she is not. My Unlock the Phone investigator searched her phone and found... One deleted message from June 15th. Can I have my evidence back? Because this is important. Um, I'm going to give you this. 
my investigator found this message. We left the number on here so you could see the number. Okay, so I'm gonna give you this so I can read this to you. This is for you. This is what she had texted this number. I'm so fed up with blank, it's not even funny. Once again, I myself had thought I would be an awesome opportunity for me, and I, I thought I had everything figured out, like I packed and quit my job. I even thought I had found a ride, and I really thought I was leaving. I should have known better, though I knew it was all too good. Now he's back in Washington, and I'm stuck here with Alan. Like, no matter how hard I try, nothing works. Like, I'm a good person beside my drug habit, which I asked you if there was... Marijuana, but... I asked you if there was substance abuse issues. You said there was not. I don't consider marijuana... Well, you did in this. You said there was drug, there was drug habits. Well, Those are your words I'm reading. I know, but... Okay. I don't lie except to Alan. Yeah, because I can't tell him the truth. He makes it near impossible for me to have a conversation with him. Because most of the time, I, you can tell when you're lying. I've been with you long enough. I know when you're lying. And I know when you you've been lying. You started off with a lie instantly. I was planning on moving to Washington because I had had enough of his abuse. You were planning on moving with another man. Y yes. But he was not somebody that I was dating. He is somebody that I have known for a very long time. And he was going to help me and this. I was going to help him. You have fun with this. I will. You have fun. I'm done. Right. My, it's over with. I'm just sad I wasted eight years on this. There's a couple of things at play here. I've asked you specific questions, and I asked you those He's questions knowing liar. after I unlocked the phone All these years. to see your response, because I was gauging exactly yeah, how cool. you would respond. I, I you just said right here that I don't really lie cool. to anyone, that I only lied to Alan. You're painting a picture a certain way for me was. to believe should, certain things. You're the one with tracking apps on his phone, correct? Yes. You were trying to leave he to go with another man. He knows about the apps. He didn't know about one of them. He knew. Okay. He knew. Either way, that's toxic. Either way, you lied. You said you lied to him. Because I can't tell him the truth about things. Like, I can't sit down and have a normal okay, so, conversation so with him. So basically, what you're doing now is you're saying that you, you're basically trying to gaslight me like you said that he tried to gaslight you. And that doesn't work. We now establish that both of you are unhealthy, not just him. You are unhealthy, too. And you're aware of it. Now. Yeah, I know you, I am. Well, I know the, that we have This is issues. the first time you said that, because before you came out here and you presented a picture that only he was unhealthy. No, it's, it's both of us. Okay. I know it's both of us, but if he could just be my partner instead of talk down to me and treat me like I'm scum on the bottom of his shoe. But when how I, can you expect a man to be a partner to you when you're not a partner to him? I have been for eight years. Okay. This was only a couple months ago. Okay, I, and I respect that. I respect that. I'm not going to say that in the beginning he didn't betray the trust. But I asked you very clearly, why didn't you leave? And you kept saying to me, hold on, before you go anyway, eight years, it's so hard to walk away. I don't want to throw it all away. These were your words. Yes. Let me tell you something. When you're in an eight-year relationship and you talk about throw it away, would you prefer to throw away eight years of your life or 40 years of your life? Because to me, mathematically, understanding that I could get out in eight years and try to find somebody else who I can build a healthy relationship with is better than staying in one where I'm gone now, giving up 10 years, 12 years, 13 years, 15 years. Because it's, it's going to creep up on you. It's scary. And the reason it's scary for you is because something else you said, which I need to point out, which is very unhealthy and shows a lot about where you're at mentally and emotionally. You said, I live for him. I you have. Know, you should never be giving up your life for any other person on this world. <laughs> he said it right here that he's getting more emotionally checked out. Then we need to go our separate ways. You do need to go your own separate ways. <laughs> Baby, you can get out of this. You can get out of this. Because you can get a job. You can support yourself. And let me ask you, before eight years ago, were you taking care of yourself? Yeah. So eight years ago, you were taking care of yourself, which means you can still take care of yourself. You are not dependent upon this man. And the fact that you have to tell to somebody that you have to lie to him, that's your truth. Because you didn't expect anybody to see that. We found them the deleted messages. I forgot about it, honestly. Exactly. So now, me seeing that you lied to him means that, like, where y'all gonna go from here? Y'all just gonna be lying to each other. You know you need to break up. Commit to breaking up. Take that fear-based thinking and turn it into abundance-based thinking. I have an abundance of job opportunities that I can support myself. I have an abundance of friends and family members I can talk to. There is an abundance of life left to live. Stop being fearful of it. You said you're scared of wasting eight years. You're going to waste 20 more? I don't want to. Then say, I won't waste 20 more.
I won't waste any more. Great. Great. I wish you the best of luck, okay? Everyone, thank you so much for being with us. Make sure to come back, friends, so we can keep talking and we can keep growing. I love you all.